Hello everyone, welcome to Radiology Case Review Series. In this video, we are going to look at serial imaging of a young patient who initially presented to emergency department with right upper quadrant pain. There was clinical suspicion for cholelithiasis. So she initially underwent ultrasound examination. So on the ultrasound examination, we can see normal CBT, we can see distended gallbladder with multiple gallstones, and Murphy's sign was positive at the time of imaging. So clinically, this was consistent with acute cholecystitis. So she underwent elective laparoscopic cholecystectomy. She later presented to the emergency department few days after cholecystectomy with right upper quadrant pain. On blood work, it was noted that she had elevated liver enzyme, which was concerning for obstructive pattern. So she underwent a follow-up ultrasound examination. On the follow-up ultrasound examination, it was noted the CBD was markedly dilated. No obvious filling defect was seen. There was no obvious perihepatic collection. So the clinical picture was concerning for cholidocolithiasis. She underwent elective ERCP examination for further evaluation and management. On the ERCP, they did spintrotomy for extraction of cholidocolithiasis. You can see the guide wire appears to extend far beyond the field of view. The true extent of the guide wire is unclear on this snapshot. Few hours following ERCP, patient had hypotension and was tachycardic. So there was clinical concern for potential hemorrhage. So the patient was immediately transferred to the emergency department for further evaluation and management. Due to concern for acute intra-abdominal hemorrhage, patient underwent three-phase CT angiogram. So we did non-contrast arterial and delayed venous phase. On the non-contrast images, we can see few locules of free gas in the sub-diaphragmatic region. There is also a large perihepatic hematoma, which is causing mass effect on the liver. On the arterial phase, again, we can see the hematoma. We can see the mass effect on the liver parenchyma. And as I scroll down further, we can see a punctate focus of contrast structuralization along the surface of the liver, which on the delayed venous phase shows increased contrast pulling, so consistent with active contrast structuralization from the surface of the liver. Due to patient's clinical status of tachycardia and hypotension and large perihepatic hematoma with active contrast structuralization, patient was immediately transferred to angiogram suite for further evaluation and management. Select images from catheter angiogram. The contrast is being injected into the hepatic artery. We can clearly see active contrast structuralization in the segment four of the liver and also few tiny fossa in the segment two and segment three of the liver. So the active contrast structuralization in the segment four of the liver corresponding to the findings seen on the CT angiogram was embolized with gel foam. The active contrast structuralization in the segment two and segment three of the liver spontaneously resolved by end of the procedure. So we are dealing with a young female patient who had undergone ERCP with post-procedural hypotension and tachycardia. On the CT angiogram, we saw large perihepatic hematoma with active contrast structuralization on the surface of the liver overlying this segment four on the arterial phase, which increased on delayed venous phase, consistent with active contrast structuralization. If we look at the ERCP images, we can see the guide wire extending far beyond the image outline and the catheter angiogram images demonstrated active contrast subsation in the segment four, which was embolized. So we are dealing with a patient who has undergone liver parenchymal perforation following ERCP. So on the literature review, this happens to be a very rare complication, at least on based on my search of the literature, there seems to be less than 25 cases published so far. This is an incredibly rare complication following ERCP. In this case report, again similar to what we saw in our patient, they demonstrated the guide wire was extending far beyond and potentially causing liver parenchymal injury. Indeed, in this case report, they hypothesized that the most likely explanation for hepatic hematoma is puncture of the liver parenchyma with the guide wire with rupture of small blood vessels with subsequent hematoma formation. It is also important to remember because ERCP is not a sterile procedure, these hematomas can get infected. And uh, in this case report, they demonstrated few locules of free gas, just like what we saw in your patient surrounding the pancreas. And they proposed a classification system for parenchymal guide wire injury. 
and I think our patient probably had either type C or type D type of injury. I hope you found this case of incredibly rare liver parenchymal perforation following ERCP to be informative. Thanks for your attention.